Yes, but it's very same peaceful. They were laying their palm branches and cloaks down and proclaiming Hosanna in the highest. What were they yelling? What were they screaming? Uh, Pontius Pilate gave them the choice to either free an innocent man, Jesus Christ, who had no sin. They could free him on that day, or they could free Barabbas, a murderer, a leader of an insurrection. And what did the crowd cry out? What did the crowd cry out? Yeah, they cried out, give us Barabbas! Give us Barabbas! We're here to tell you. We're here to tell you. That's a warning. Because they cried out, give us Barabbas! And when Pontius Pilate said, what should we do with this innocent man, Jesus? They said, crucify him. Let his blood be upon us and on our children. Well, that's what you were doing, folks. If you have sinned against the holy and righteous and perfect God, and you have never turned from your sins, laid your sins down at the foot of the cross, walked away from him 180 degrees, and said, God, I didn't earn it, I didn't deserve it, but you give me that free gift of salvation that comes along to the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Folks, if you have not done that, but you have an understanding here in America of who Jesus Christ is, that he's the one and only way into God's kingdom, and that you, and that you,
was a total failure, and I might turn him off for Jesus Christ for, for the rest of time, and I, I screwed it up. So you know what I would do when I was like that? I used to cherry pick. I used to cherry pick. I used to get just people. I figured they're 90%, 90% sure they're going to become a Christian today, and those would be the people that I would share with. So what was I doing? I was harvesting other people's work. I was harvesting other people's labor. Well, this is this isn't a this isn't a ministry of harvest, folks. We understand that. There's, we're not expecting to make. We're not going to ask for an altar call. We're not going to expect mass revival out here. But this is a ministry of, of, of tearing up rock hard soil so that somebody else can come along and drop a seed and it'll actually take. We we think of ourselves like a farmer in the spring who gets out on his tractor. He's got those big nasty blades behind his tractor, and he goes out in the field. He tears up that rock hard soil and loses it up so that later on they can plant a seed and it'll actually take. And you know we have Christians that come up to us and say, how many people got saved today? Well, do you ever go up to a farmer who's just plowed up his field and broken up all that rock hard soil? And say, how much corn have you harvested tonight? But how much corn have you harvested today, farmer? That wasn't his purpose that night. But our purpose is to give you the full counsel of God. And later on tonight, there'll be more wicked and drunk people coming up and hassling us. And our job tonight is to break up that rock hard soil. Hey, let me pull the way out. Call on that name. And that name is Jesus. Glory to God. Sometimes we get so down. Hallelujah. Lord, to the Lamb of God, there is nowhere else but the milk cup. <laughs> you should hear this guy. <laughs> this, guy just, this guy's got a more powerful. Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! Jesus! Oh, I love that. Lord! Amen. dressed doing the foulest things you could ever have but they claim to all be saved they claim that they're all saved they're all christians they all love jesus we're all every bit as bad as they are oh no i'm not as bad i'm not as bad i was i was once but praise god i am not an unrepentant sinner there is no greater sin all sin is equal in god's eyes well people will be punished there will be people that will be punished more severely, there will be people that are punished uh, with uh, with several stripes, and several, and some that will be punished with fewer stripes. So, uh, I mean, there will be different, there will be differing uh, degrees of punishment in hell. Well, I'm not arguing with you. I'm, I'm yeah. just, I'm just, I'm just having a conversation. Okay. Because I go to church. One, one. I mean, we'll see. Thank you. Really? I'm just having a conversation. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to sexual activity. When Jesus got up on the let me just get your question. On, on, I'm not reporting you. Oh, okay. The question. When Jesus got on top of his, on top of the mount for a sermon on the mount, he looked out on all his disciples, and, cursing, and, and many other people, and many other people, fifteen thousand people, everything, everything, everybody that that came out there to see him. 
the first thing he did was not to judge people or to condemn people, was to express love for everybody. Well, he, he fed he fed the multitudes, but he also he had you know you, you can't just take a couple of a couple of verses from Jesus and then and say that's all Jesus ever said. Jesus had Jesus Jesus told uh, told the Pharisees. He told uh, he told people. He told entire cities. Woe unto you, Bethsaida. Woe unto you, Chorazin. For it'll be it'll be better for Sodom and Gomorrah. It'll be better. It'll be better for uh, that. Um, that actually the nation of Nineveh, the people of Nineveh who repented, will rise up and judge those cities because they repented at the word and the warning of God and that they didn't. I mean, he was he was actually saying that it was good that Jonah went and, and preached to Nineveh. When Jonah went and preached to Nineveh, um, he didn't give them a soft, flowery message. He actually didn't even give them any hope. Jonah's message, Jonah, aside from Jesus Christ, actually Jonah was the most successful street preacher in the entire Bible because he walked around Nineveh for three days and in three days, all he told people was, uh, "Yet 40 days, and Nineveh is going to be overthrown." And the people were so were so shocked by that, and that their life was about to end, and that God was so serious about their sin that they repented. They didn't even know if it would work or not. They didn't know if it was too late, but they re repented, and God looked down upon their repentance, and He relented from the destruction He was going to bring about them. Uh, you know, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, Jesus Himself. You know, Jesus said. The broad is the road that leads to destruction. Many go that way. Narrow is the path that leads to everlasting life. Few be that find it. Jesus was telling people, most people are going to go to hell. You don't, you don't see that on any posters of Jesus, you know, paraphrasing Jesus, saying most people are going to go to hell. That's not what he wants. But it's still true. Jesus said, don't fear him who can kill the body and do no more. Fear him who can kill the body and cast your soul into hell. Yes, I say, fear him. So, you know, I know our message is it's very salty and it's very it's very bold and it's brash and it's very different than the modern church of America. We're trying to be equal time. We're trying to say all all people in America ever hear, both the people in church and especially the people outside of church, all they ever hear, Jesus loves you just as you are, doesn't matter, God's love and forgiveness is unconditional, etc. And it's not. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. So that's the part that you don't want to do. They have to turn from their wicked way. I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins and I will heal their land. That's that's their job. Because you love sin. You don't love, you don't love anybody else. You say you love your partner or your spouse. I'm telling you, you're lying. All you love is your own self-gratification, your own self selfish pleasures, your self-indulgence, that's your whole heart, that's your whole life, it's selfish indulgence, that's all you care you about, judging. you don't, you are I am judging, I am judging, it says to be see clearly so that you can pull the moat out of your brother's what eye, what does Matthew, exactly, you were judging, I am trying to pull the moat judging. out of your brother's eye, yes, your foolish you atheism, your foolish you denying judging. of God Almighty, you your judge. foolish rejection of his standards, your you foolish are rejection of God Almighty. God, you do not represent In your foolishness, you deny God, you deny His standards because you love your sin. You love your sin, love you love your sin, and you hate God Almighty. He touched me. He came up and touched me. You love your sin. You love yourself. You love your own selfish pleasure more than anyone else. Your whole life is based around your own pleasure, your own selfish indulgence. You don't care about anyone else. You don't care about love. All right, you lying sodomites, you lying homosexuals that say you are about love. I'm telling you right now, you're not about love. You're about nothing but lust. You're about nothing but your own gratification. You're not about love. If you were about love, you wouldn't sodomize. You wouldn't sodomize your partner. If you were about love, you wouldn't spread disease throughout the human race. But no, you're wicked and you love yourself. You love your sin more than you love God, more than you love your neighbor. But the Bible, the Bible says, the Bible says that the children of God are manifested, and also the children of the devil. The him that doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither him that loveth not his brother. 